Unit 1, Wonderful Waste, Part 3. Good morning, children. How are you all? I am sure you are keeping yourself safe during these days of lockdown. Take care of yourself and be happy too. Children, look at this picture. What do you see in this picture? You can see a mountain of plastic waste dumped in this particular place. In different parts of our country, in big cities and towns, there are areas where waste is dumped like this. This plastic waste doesn't get decayed. It remains there for hundreds of years without any change. As a result, water does not percolate into the ground and it can cause floods. Such areas of waste can also cause health problems for humans and animals. In many places you have seen animals die because they eat plastic and get choked. And if you burn plastic, it releases harmful toxins like poisons into the atmosphere. Our lesson, Wonderful Waste, focuses upon how to reuse waste. Reuse means use it again. We have seen how the cook is going to use the vegetables again to make a new dish. Now, besides reusing the waste, we must also think of how to reduce waste. It means how to make the quantity of plastic waste especially less by careful planning. What can we do to reduce the plastic waste? Use cloth bags whenever you go for shopping. Because if you do not carry sufficient cloth bags, when you come home, you will be surprised to see the number of plastic bags that are there in your bag, shopping bag. So try to go with cloth bags. Secondly, use only glass bottles and cans for water. <coughs> Thirdly, as children, you can use ink pens because you can use we can refill this ink pen and use it for a long time. So in all these ways, let us try to take care of our nature, take care of our mother earth. Today let us learn the second half of the lesson, Wonderful Waste. I am sure you have read the lesson and so let us go to the second part of this lesson. The cook took all the vegetable bits wash them and clean them well then he cut them into long strips the last lesson dear children we have seen how the cook was challenged by the king to make a new dish out of the vegetable scraps so here the cook collects all the vegetables the bits of vegetables washed them thoroughly cleaned it and then he cut them into long cubes long strips what's the meaning of strip strip means a long narrow piece long narrow piece you can see how narrow and long these strips of vegetables are the vegetables are all cut in same length and they are cut thin too so you can see these are looking very nice yes or no all of them are cut very neatly into thin long strips means pieces okay so read that once again. He took all the vegetable bits, washed them and cleaned them well. Then he cut them into long strips. Strip means a long narrow piece of something. Long narrow piece of something. We can say it as also a strip of paper a strip of cloth, etc. Anything that is long and narrow in shape. 
he put them in a huge pot and placed it on the fire to cook. Next, the cook collected all these vegetables, cut pieces, put them in a huge pot. What's the meaning of huge pot? Huge pot means a big pot, as you can see in the picture. Then he kept it on the fire to cook. Next, he ground some fresh coconut, green chilies and garlic together. So you can see in this picture, fresh coconut, Here you can see coconut, you can see green chilies, green chilli here, okay, and garlic, garlic, you have seen garlic, otherwise go now to the kitchen and find out what garlic is. This is the whole pod of garlic, but he cleans it up and only grinds this kind of garlic. What's the meaning of ground? He ground some fresh coconut. Children, past tense of grind is ground. Grind means to make a paste. You can see as it is like ancient days, we used to grind it on a stone. Now we are, nowadays we use mixing. But this process is known as, this action is known as grind. So past tense of grind is called ground. So here it means that the action is complete. The cook ground some fresh coconut, green chilies and garlic together. He added this paste and some salt to the cooking vegetables. Look at the paste of ground coconut and green chilies added to the vegetables. A tempting smell started coming from the pot. A tempting smell. You can see the smell, the, the what's that, the steam of the, from the vegetable is coming up. And you can also get a nice smell if you are very close by. What's the meaning of tempting? If you are sitting and studying somewhere in the house and mother is cooking in the kitchen, if she is preparing something special, say biryani, you get the smell. You may not be able to sit there for a long time. You will suddenly go to the kitchen to see what is happening. And if you get the nice smell of that dish, it makes you feel like eating. That's called tempting. Okay, Tempting means to attract someone to do something. To attract someone to do something so if you get a nice smell of food it makes you feel like eating it that's called tempting now he whipped some curd and added it to the curry the next step of making this new dish was the cook took some curd you can see curd it's very familiar to you all of you use in your meals the curd looks very nice and thick here so when you are adding curd into the curry, you don't add thick curds. You want to make it, you have to make it thin curd. So to make it thin, you beat it up. You beat it up with a spoon or a whisk or whatever. So then it becomes thin. So make beating this curd is known as whipping the curd. What's the meaning of whip? Let's see. The word whip has got many meanings. Whip actually is you can see in the picture here. Ah, this is what whip is. A whip is a piece of leather or cord which has got a handle. Here you hold and you can use this strip of leather for beating something. Earlier days, dear children, the whip was used as an instrument of punishment. Especially long ago, the criminals were beaten up with something called as whip. Here you can see. Or slaves were beaten up. So they were sla uh, slaves in uh, western countries. Especially the Negroes were bought as slaves to work in the farms and fields and estates of rich men. And the slaves had no freedom. And if they work less or they could not do the work properly, at once the master can beat them up using a whip. Here you can see a man using a long whip. Here is the handle and you can see the leather piece hanging here with this. If you get a nice beating, my dear children is very very painful. So people were used uh, to be whipped 
especially the criminals and slaves. Here you can see the whip is used again to beat animals. You can see a man sitting on the horse. So olden days there were no vehicles and horses were used. And to make the horse run faster, they would beat it with a whip. You can see the man holding a whip and then he would beat it and the horse would run faster. So all these are actually very um, it's a cruel ways of dealing with human beings and animals. I'm sure, I am sure that all of us are very happy that such kind of cruel activities are not present in our world today. We are very lucky. So that's called a whip. Now whip has got ma uh, many meanings and especially one is used as noun. Noun means naming word. One is used as verb. Whip means to beat. I told you to stir. Move fast or suddenly in a specified direction. That is the action word. Whip can also be used as a naming word. That means a strip of leather attached to a handle used for beating a person or animal as we have seen in the picture. So that thing is known as a whip. Here the action is also known as whipping. Whipping means beating something. So what did the cook do? Here you can see this is called a whisk. We normally use it in the kitchen to whip eggs up to make omelettes or even to beat curd. We use this kind of things called as whisk. So actually we whip uh, the eggs and curd in uh, while preparing dishes. So whip means to beat. So the cook beat up some curd and made it thin and then he added into the curry. So, okay, so let's read it again. Now he whipped some curd and added it to the curry. He also poured a few spoonfuls of coconut oil into the vegetables. So to make it more tasty. He got another idea. Let me add some oil into the curry. So he, what did he do? He poured a few spoonfuls of coconut oil. Not too much of oil but he measured in spoon and then he poured a few spoonfuls of coconut oil into the vegetables. Then he decorated the dish with curry leaves. So making it look also nice. Not only that you prepare food, but it should also look nice and tasty. Very attractive. So he decorated the dish with curry leaves. Lo and behold, the new dish was ready. Lo and behold. What's the meaning of lo and behold? It, it's a phrase that we use to express Look and see. Look and see. It is a way of expressing surprise. So when we are surprised, we say, Lo and behold. Okay. So, lo and behold. Look, what a surprise. That's the meaning of it. And the new dish was ready. The cook served this new dish to the guests that evening. So his work was done and he was very happy. See how the new dish looks. Everyone was eager to know the name of the new dish. So all those who ate the food were very happy with the new dish. The cook thought and thought. Then a name came to his mind. He named it Aviel. Aviel became famous all over Kerala and is now one of the dishes in a traditional Kerala feast. And imagine it all came from a basket of waste. So Aviel is now served at every during every feast. Traditional Kerala feast. What's the meaning of traditional? We use this word very often in English. It is traditional. It is traditional. This is traditional in this way. What's the meaning of traditional? Traditional means something that has come down from long ago. For example, our great grandfathers did something and our grandfathers did the same thing. Then next set of other, that means our fathers and mothers did the same thing and now we are doing the same thing. So it may be a dress, way of dressing. It may be a particular food that we prepared. So all these are known as traditional because it belongs to long ago. It was actually first prepared or done long ago and we carry it out even now. That's why it is called as traditional. So traditional means handed down from age to age. Traditional feast means 
a hearty meal served for many guests on a special occasion. Okay, a grand meal served on a special occasion, especially that has got food items that were prepared that are old. Okay, that was prepared even hundreds of years ago. So not the the new uh, what's that food that are available in the market. We can't say tandoori chicken and um, all these new items. We cannot call them traditional because they are new ones in the market. They are not traditional. But avial, sambar, all these are traditional food because it has been prepared by our ancient uh, people who were in our land. Maybe by our grandfathers and grand great grandfathers and so on. So that completes our lesson. Here are some pictures of as to how the cook has prepared this avil various steps of preparing this avil here are some pictures let's try to identify it what is this first picture here you can see the in the first picture first the cook prepared or cut the vegetables into long strips secondly he put it in the in a huge pot and placed it on the fire to cook Thirdly, you can see that he ground some fresh coconut with green chillies and garlic. Then he, ah, then he added this paste into the curry. Then he added some curd by whipping it. Then he poured some few spoonfuls of oil. At last, he decorated the dish with curry leaves. And finally, the dish was ready. So some new words from this part of the lesson. Strip. S-T-R-I-P. Strip. G-R-O-U-N-D. Ground. Ground. D-E-C-O-R-A-T-E. -E. Decorate. Decorate. T-E-M-P-T. Tempt. Tempt. W-H-I-P. Whip. T R A D I T I O N A L traditional traditional then last phrase is lo and behold now let's learn how to use these words in sentences strip Jane used strips of color paper to decorate her room tempt Alice was tempted to eat the cake she found on the dining table. Whip. The cook whipped some curd and added it to the curry. Traditional. Sari is the traditional dress of women in Kerala. Last, here is a question. Ingredients are the things that are used to make a dish. Circle the ingredients of avian in the box below here are some ingredients let's see which are the ingredients that are used for making avian chilies groundnut wood vegetable scraps coconut roasted peanuts curd pot garlic broken bangles basket curry leaves let's see chilies vegetable scraps coconut curd garlic and curry leaves the other items are not used to make avian state whether the following statements are true or false the king had ordered a dinner in the palace is it a true statement yes it's true no one had heard of or tasted avial before. True. The cook had planned to make another dish using the vegetable scraps. Is it true? No. The cook did not plan to make another dish, but he had initially planned to throw the vegetable scraps as waste. So it is false. So this completes the explanation of our lesson dear children.
read the lesson many times and learn the new words thank you